Welcome back to The Inside Job, The Entrepreneur's Voyage to a Soulfully Abundant Life. I'm your host, Jessica Page, and today's guest is Ms. Katarina Satori. Katarina, welcome to the show. I love the name of the show, Entrepreneur's Voyage. What? I love it. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're so welcome. And it's interesting because I don't think I've told this story this season, but um, I was on this quest. I really wanted to come up with this series where, where I could collaborate with so many other, you know, spiritual trailblazers. And I was trying to, you know, it's so interesting because anytime you go into forcing something, <laughs> you've got to sort of surrender. And so I was like, I found myself forcing the name and wanting to come up with the name and all the details. And I just set the intention before I went to bed one night that the name would just come to me and the tagline and really the whole theme and feel for the show. And I woke up to the inside job, the entrepreneur's voyage to a soulfully abundant life. <laughs> so thank you for that. It's brilliant because your best ideas come to you when you are in a state of relaxation. Mm -hmm. So, so true. So for those of you who do not know Katarina, she is an internationally acclaimed spiritual teacher, business and thought leader, and an entrepreneur. She dedicated her life to the service of humanity, supporting her students and clients and activating their highest potential and creating a rich legacy. And she says that it doesn't matter what cards life gave you to begin with, rules are the same, but the skills of the players are different. Learn the game and master your life, no matter how humble your beginnings. You always have a choice. So Katarina, before we really delve in, I have three questions for you. And the first one is, what is your favorite color? I almost fell out of my dress right now. But <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> what is my favorite color? Well, for the listeners, I'm wearing one of those goddess dresses, you know, that if you move, <laughs> you can totally fell out of it. This is a comedy show. My favorite color, darling, is rich emerald green. And that's, you know, represents this prosperity that is always all around us. If you, if we just open our eyes and tune into it. Beautiful. And the second question is, what is a recent book? that you've loved? Oh, I've been talking about it all over my social media. Uh, the book is called The Heart of a Shaman, The Heart of the Shaman, and it's by wisdom keepers called uh, Paco from Peru, and it's written so beautifully and so simple, and you don't have to be on a shamanic path to tune into it. It's literally the ancient ways of of living with an open heart and letting go of illusions and um, being kind to your fellow people. It's an incredible book and you can just read it in one setting. And I've been recommending that to everybody. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, and my last question is, what is going on in your world right now that you are super lit up about? Hmm illumination expansion and spaciousness those are the three uh, themes in my world right now that i feel i'm such a blessing to expand into those <laughs> yeah all right so i know that you came to the u.s when you were 23 with three dollars to your name with no iphone right <laughs> we did not have iphones at that time that's right <laughs> really just trusting in yourself and having the faith in your higher power and so i would love for you to share your story really around that and really like what landed you into the work and what is lighting you up about your life today you know i've been uh, life has put me through so many tests since very, very young age. Um, I come from very humble beginnings of a single mother in Soviet Russia, uh, right when the country went through a massive collapse of the government and people who were middle class overnight became, you know, poverty level, struggling uh, parts of society. So <clears throat> when I was seven years old, I looked around at my family, at their conditions, and I had this very 
fast realization, if it's, if I going to have a better life, the only person that can uh, get that is myself. So I was very motivated as a child uh, to learn English on my own from tapes and books and libraries and, um, and really just take chances on a little glimpses of opportunity that was coming my way. I would take a chance on that. So when I came to US with $3 to my name, I came here for a summer exchange job. And my very first job in the United States was literally scrubbing floors as, um, what is it called? The housekeeping in hotels, you know, simple, simple hotels. And the biggest lesson from that was I never looked on it like something beneath me. You know, it was a stepping stone. I was so excited that somebody actually gave me a job. I have an opportunity. And because in my home country, Russia, there it, it just was a bureaucracy on the bureaucracy. And I knew I could never pursue my dream and be fully free in my expression as, um, as, a, as, a, as a self-made person. So to come into this country was such a huge victory for me. I didn't mind starting at the very, very bottom. And I just knew it's only the matter of me developing my people skills even more so and showing up with absolute devotion with every single opportunity that life would give me and this principle of being faithful and small, you know? So after I started with the housekeeping, the next job I had was to sell trinkets in the gift shop. And I had so much devotion to that position that a business partner of a person who owned the gift shop saw me and he says, who is this kid over there, you know, selling ornaments with so much enthusiasm? <laughs> and I want to talk to her. And he was like, hey, kid, you know, I was 23. He's like, I see you selling Christmas ornaments with so much joy. I tell you this, how about you come back next year, you sell diamonds for me with the same enthusiasm. So the opportunity will find you based on how you show up in the moment. You know, the, uh, the present moment is always rich with so much opportunity, but we, if we're disconnected, we have reluctance to showing up with our devotion. We will look down on something, you know, life is asking us to show up with humility and scrub floors, right? Or sell something little, but it's always a test of our commitment and of our devotion. But if you show up faithful and small, it's only a matter of time where a bigger opportunity is just around the corner because depending if we know it or not, we are being watched, always being watched by our higher self, by our guides, by our spirit guides, right? We're being watched. How do we show up? How do we respond to opportunities and challenges? So fast forward 15 years later, <laughs> you know, I worked for myself for the last, uh, for the last seven years. i I'm, you know, I always, I was looking, I was always so naturally good at so many things, but it was a gift and a curse at the same time, because I lived with, I felt like I lived with a burden of unfulfilled potential. And I was so anxious to find my lane in life. I'm like, well, I'm carrying this massive gift, but where the hell I am apply, I can apply them, right? And in life taught me to be patient with my process. And if the path is not clear, it simply means that you're not ready yet. You know, when the path is clear, boom, you're being called for your opportunity and for your mission. And my very first client, uh, Jessica, actually came to me. And, he, you know, we had one of those really deep engaging conversations at one of the conferences. And he, you know, came up to me and we started talking. And the next thing we know, two hours goes by. And then he says, you know, I work with the best coaches in the world. And conversation with you really moved me. How can I hire you? And that's how my coaching career began, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I'm going to put together a coaching package for you. Give me a moment. And that's another teaching lesson here is don't skip a beat. You know, when opportunity comes to you, take it by the horn. It doesn't have to be perfect. It has to be real. If somebody's inviting you to an opportunity, step into it. And then you learn through experience. Amazing. 
sister. I mean, so much just in that that we can move into. Um, but I love this idea around, I think what you demonstrated so beautifully is that you just created the sense of joy and openness. Mm -hmm. And so you're completely in the frequency to just have these. And, and to be clear, they're all around us. These opportunities are all around us. But so often we're so in the hustle and the grind and not tapped in or connected into being able to receive. So thank you for really demonstrating that. Mm -hmm. And um, it's kind of leading me right into this, this sense that in order to be successful in business, it's got to be about the strategy. It's got to be about going really hard. And I would love for you to like speak into that a bit. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's a discipline and flow together, right? Like two, wi two wings of the bird. If you just remain in the flow, right? If you just stay in your feminine, you, there can be easily, there's a seduction of floating away and becoming, you know, kind of detached from the mundane and not so exciting responsibilities of running a business, that's where the other wing of a discipline can really support you, you know, to stay engaged, to be in your digital CEO kind of role, right? And, and the flow part of you is the creative muse and, you know, this, uh, the priestess archetype, that, the magician archetype. So, so it's both. It's knowing when to shift gears right? Um, uh, structuring your life in a way that you have a lot of spaciousness for the flow, for your inspiration to flow, and also showing up and taking care of business, right? You know, knowing how to delegate, knowing how to give, give other people direction. So I believe it's both. And definitely, you know, in the beginning of the path, it's almost you can't escape the hustle. You know, because you're hustling in the way of you're trying to figure out so much at the same time. And uh, so that's okay. If, if you find yourself in the hustle mode in the beginning, that's okay. You know, soon you're going to find yourself looking for a different way of being. That just comes with experience of being yeah. in the past. You know, if we had this conversation in my first year of entrepreneurship, I would give you a completely different perspective <laughs> than year number seven, right? So I, I feel now from this uh, experience, I'm, I'm finding real value of having my strong inner masculine that can, the executive role, right? The digital CEO and a very strong inner feminine, the magician, the priestess archetype, this, you know, the healer, the, the muse, the artist in me and valuing them both and um, keeping my eye and my, my hand on the pulse, you know, which one requires what in the moment. So um, I love structure in my life. And I also create a very, very spacious calendar. You know, I keep my commitments, my plans very fluid. And, uh, and I, for the reason, because my, my life is devoted to service to humanity. So I have to have spaciousness in my calendar to listen to the voice of the spirit where I am needed next. Mm -hmm. right? So this is so so it's 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 so fun to be a female entrepreneur because we're naturally intuitive, we're naturally gifted with ability to attend to several projects at the same time, right? And we're naturally collaborative. So that's why you know to be a woman entrepreneur is right now has never been a better time. So yes, I'll pause here. <laughs> Yeah, so how do you feel it's different for men or the masculine to show up in business versus the woman? I love that you asked me that question because I'm going to speak from the feminine uh, perspective first. You know, um, when, I, when I first came to this business, I was predominantly in my masculine and I kept running my body to the ground. I kept going through burnout after burnout after burnout because, you know, if I just drive from my masculine, I can become incredibly competitive. It's like one of my blind spots, you know, and I get this, this high on achievement, right? And crushing one goal after another. 
and which that didn't honor my feminine energy and the feminine energy i'm gonna use the the metaphor of a spider right and a spider that weaves this beautiful web but a, spi a spider doesn't weave all the time it weaves and then just pauses and sits in her web right contemplates uh, admires her web so every time i would give a creative birth of creating a new course or creating a live event or you know doing something like that i would notice that my my activity level would drop after i would give birth to a creative project and i started paying attention to that i was like I can interpret it as melancholy and as a low mood. No, 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 no. This is an integration cycle because a woman entrepreneur creates in cycles. So we, we have a cycle of create creative idea, then creative birth, then creative uh, disintegration and kind of like inactivity or, you know, coming back to yourself, coming back to your creative juiciness. It's like a season, right? Us women, we have four seasons right and so in the matter of in the moment i start thinking of my creativity is moving in the 90 day cycles so i only focus on the 90 day cycle of my business what project i would like to commit in the next 90 days knowing that i'm going to go through the whole process of birth you know peak of creativity natural dissolution and decline and slowing down hibernation process right comparing to masculine energy they are they gonna be very linear and very sequential you know so they they think about a masculine going step after step after step after step and they have their integration uh, moments built in into their sequence you know so women are very cycle and men are very linear so if we if we um you know compare ourselves to men entrepreneurs, you know, Grand Cardone, 10x everything. <laughs> it is a disaster for women, right? And if you look at women who follow him, you know, it's only going to be a matter of time where they're going to feel something is off. Maybe in their health, maybe in their relationship, it is just not natural for a woman to 10x shit. Excuse my language. Oh, it's not right it's not natural for us darling it yeah. is a disaster and 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 the holistic you know like wisdom is really honoring your creative cycles and the more spaciousness i create in my life the more everything i require just naturally shows up you know my courses feel themselves my programs feel themselves my events feel themselves because i know how to tap into my true magnetic power of my feminine center you know like a spider in my web i i create this beautiful geometry and people magnetize to it without me going and hunting them like a man mm -hmm. thank you so much for that I am wanting to shift gears a little bit and something that hasn't come up on the show is really this idea of karmic clearing. And I know it's something that you talk so much about. So whatever, wherever you feel called to go with that. Oh, Jessica, you know, it's, it's one of the key tools that I utilize in my work is to help people liberate inherited karmic imprints specifically in two areas one is um, the ability to magnetize abundance of magnetize resources required for their life's work right so i look at what their parents uh income level what their grandparents income level because usually children are so unconsciously loyal unconsciously loyal to the level of financial freedom their parents were able to manifest so they're karmically tied to that blueprint of abundance right and um when i discovered this powerful spiritual technology that helps people release and rewrite their money story it's been just game changer for me because you know when i found myself i'm continually hitting the income glass ceiling 
And I was thinking, what is it going on there? You know, it's not the strategy. It's not the willpower. I'm like the most will, willful woman I know. I'm like, what's going on here? And then I, after I, I've been in this contemplation and inquiry, I was guided to, oh, energy. Oh, karmic connection. Oh, that's where I get to look. And, um, and so I've been, I've been sharing with people the tools that I personally found on my path and uh, that supported me to break through those karmic bonds, you know, with financial imprints, karmic imprints, poverty consciousness, financial codependency, right? And it's all uh, is based on fear, fear of being powerful, fear of being visible, fear of envy, fear of jealousy, right? And it's unconscious, something that we are not consciously aware, but we feel resistance and how does it show up? You know, you are preparing for a launch of your program and you're like totally clear, it's gonna be amazing, it's gonna take you to financial freedom. And right before the launch, you begin to sabotage. Mm -hmm. Either you get sick, you get in the accident, you start creating a lot of mistakes, right? And it's your subconscious mind creating blocks, right? Because it's too scary to become financially free, right? So the moment I started introducing this technology to others, it's been so powerful. And I created a whole program called The Frequency Shift. That's one of my, my main programs. And it's all about, you know, rewiring those uh, set points of, for financial freedom that you've learned from your parents. Mm-hmm. So what are like, what are some of, in your experience, what are some of like the first initial steps of this clearing process or even like the awareness or the willingness to look at some of the stuff? I love that you ask about the first tiny step. You know, I introduce people to really become committed in um, invoking nature forces to the seeing nature forces as their allies, and specifically new moon and the full moon. You know, our Western society, we're so disconnected from the ancient wisdom of how to see the nature as a live, creative, intelligent spirit. So, you know, every full moon, it's like a prayer to, for me, Jessica. Every full moon, it's so easy to navigate. I invoke the grandmother moon and I say it is my conscious intention, my conscious prayer to release any and all outdated belief systems, karmic imprints around money, around, you know, the resources that I can receive. So I, 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 I speak it. I ask, I insist on that. I invoke the power of the full moon. Easiest way to remember full moon is always clearing illumination and release and the new moon is all about new start intentions launch right calling something new so i would say if people start paying attention to the full moons and creating rituals for themselves and asking their subconscious mind to release programs that hold them back mm. and actually bring the innocence it will require open mind and the innocence of the child because if there is a skeptical mind, it's not gonna, it's just not gonna work. So um, at first, you know, simply believe, find that little magic within your heart when you were a kid and you believed in fairies, you believed in gnomes, remember that part? And, and ask that part to, 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 to believe again. And since, you know, I have a feeling most of you listeners are women, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for women, it's going to be natural. You know, we are so connected to nature naturally. And the moment I start really tuning into the moon, whoa, and you know, I live by the ocean. And when, when the, so I really feel the moon because I'm so close to the water and we are 90% made of water. So you start talking to the moon and then you start actually remembering that you can program your cells, you can give command to your DNA right? And you, you begin to see yourself as a quantum alchemist, which is so powerful, you know, and this is what I teach my clients is I can give them the most badass strategy and that's just one level of help. But if I can uh, help them believe in, in the power of their word and the power of their intention, that will just maximize any business strategy that I can offer to them. Mm, 
so powerful. And I'm so glad that you brought up the new moon and the full moon because it's something that I really have the intention around asking you. So um, I'm getting pulled towards like, I know that you travel quite a bit, right? And you host retreats and different things. What is one of the most like magical places that you've been that have, has really like shifted your spiritual journey? Well, two places come to mind. One of them is Tulum, Mexico. And I actually led a transformational retreat there two years ago. And it is just incredible. It's like a portal, you know, it's, it's really a portal because ancient Mayans, they did not consider themselves worthy to live in Tulum. So they had villages all around it, but they would go to Tulum to initiate their, uh, their kings. Mm -hmm. So it's a sacred place. It's really, really beautiful and, uh, and very pure. So I love that place that I would highly recommend to anybody to go there. And the second place was for me personally is India. And, uh, you know, it's, it's such an ancient land where you see a lot of contrast, right? So for me, uh, almost every year or every two years, I make a trip to a third world country to give myself a reality shake, you know, because uh, the curse of the Western world is a curse of comfort. And no matter how mindful and how aware you are, it's like this trance of comfort that covers us and we become less sensitive to what's really going on in the world. So for us people in leadership, right, us women on the front lines in leadership, I don't see any, anything more important than at least every two years, take a trip that you can see the contrast, that you can be shaken into urgency of leadership, you know, of, of becoming even more committed to your path and to your mission and seeing, you know, that the privilege of was Western women entrepreneurs, women who can speak our voice, women who have so many resources available to us. There's something unlocks on you where you see that. That feels so powerful. And I think, you know, it was, Tulum feels magical as well, but I think it was really your experience in going to um, these third world countries to allow us to really shift that within us. So I think that was exactly what needed to come through. And uh, I know we only have a few minutes left, but I would like to maybe introduce one more thing. It's a big, big topic. So, you know, it's like asking you to <laughs> cover a huge topic in such a short window, but I am being called to have you just introduce Gene Keys. So for the people who don't know about Gene Keys, what are Gene Keys? And maybe just like, a, I don't know, five minutes or so, whatever comes. I love this challenge, darling. You know, I'm a <laughs> I am. I am one of the um, one of the first round of ambassadors. Uh, the first uh, ambassador program was uh, was was opened last year, and I went through it and it was very very um, comprehensive and intense. But the Gene Keys is basically a synthesis of all uh, wisdom teachings. It's kind of like a modern oracle for modern times and it gives you a map of your awakening it gives you a map to your self-realization based on your time of birth on your of, of your of your specific coordinates that you chose to enter the physical time and space right based on your astrology numerology i ching is just human design it is an incredible uh a map like a code that you can activate that helps you see the path your unique journey towards activating your true genius in the world uh, magnetizing higher frequency relationships and unlocking a natural and fulfilling way of prosperity so so there's three pathways and you get to unlock that and contemplate. It's an incredible journey. It's not an intellectual system that you got to cram in your already full life. It's actually a living wisdom. If you invite it into your life, it begins to alchemize your consciousness. It begins to open up 
insights and epiphanies that you could never thought would be possible, you know, and it is for deep divers. I find deep divers and old souls, they just feel like, oh my God, why didn't I find it sooner, you know, because I find that old souls feel uh, sometimes restless, you know, they kind of surpass the basic uh, new age teachings. I'm like, okay, give me something dense, give me something deep. And the jinkies is that it's deep, it's profound, but it's also playful. And it's written from a feminine wisdom, holistic wisdom. It's very poetic. You read it and you have, you know, this optimism and enthusiasm for the future of humanity instead of getting really dark and, you know, losing hope for humanity. So it's a powerful wisdom teachings. And um, I love, love, love sharing this work with others. What turned you on to delving deep into this work for yourself? They found me. The Jinkies found me. First, I was introduced to the human design, which is a sister system. And, um, you know, I have a very precise body recognition when the new teachings come to me. I, I have almost like the shivers in my body when I just hear the name. And the human design was like that. And then the gene keys, I just, I, I read the first page. I was like, whoa, what is this? And I dove in and I spent, you know, months and years of decoding it and diving deeper and deeper. This, it requires patience. And, you know, it's like a, it's literally like a code that unlocks, you know, like one sequence at a time. Yeah. Yeah. And I, <laughs> so now I teach workshops and classes on that. It's, it's just so much fun. It's so much fun. Amazing. So I know we're, we're nearing the end of our time together today. And I know you have a free gift for everyone who is listening in, which is 21 days of presence. It's abundance meditation. Can you just share a little bit about that? Yes, it is a super simple way to open yourself up to the opportunities that already exist in your energy field, right? So the, I created this album because one of my clients encouraged me. He was like, Katarina, I want you to create this album. I'm like, okay. So, <laughs> so this is the Audi album that I recorded and it's five minutes a day. Um, I introduce a, a word. So it could be, you know, a desire or surrender or willingness. And each meditation, it's only five minutes, but it introduces a specific frequency and vibration to attune to. And it helps you to open yourself up to the abundance that's already existing in your world. And um, so, so this is the, you know, I'm going to share with you the link where people can sign up. And then... Is it okay if I share about the other? Yeah, I'll include, oh, yes. And I'll include the URL so everyone can just click and join. But yes, what's coming? And what's coming too is I already shared with Jessica that um, in literally maybe two or three weeks, uh, all my subscribers will get access to one of my video courses called Karmic Clearing. And there's five modules and I'm going to give it away to all my subscribers and uh, as a contribution to humanity. You know, so more people can liberate themselves from the bondage of karmic toxicity that is not even theirs to carry. And more people can serve from this liberated space and create their dream lives. Thank you so much, yeah. Katerina. It's been such an honor and a joy having you on the show. Thank you for having me, darling. Such a gift.